Hi, my name is Miranda Bezo, and I am from Reardon, Washington, and I'm doing the Illustrated Talk Senior Critic. Hi, I'm Mike Jarrett, and I'm from Reardon, Texting while driving is like playing Monopoly with your life. If you take the chance, you could end up in jail or lose everything. My name is Miranda Bezo, and my Weird and FCC LA project focuses on the dangers of texting while driving and the effects. Each year in the USA, there are about 6 million car accidents. 3 million of these accidents result in injury, and about 2 million result in permanent injuries, such as loss of sight, loss of sound, loss of brain capabilities, face and head injuries, burns, and more. Over 40,000 people die each year, and 40% of these accidents involve alcohol. 30% are attributed to speeding, and reckless driving accounts for 33% of all major car accidents. Around 5,000 teens die each year, and 825 people are permanently injured each day, including 11 teen deaths. One in three individuals have admitted to texting while driving, but I bet they didn't know one in five accidents is caused by distracted driving. Even though many people have been informed about the facts presented on the previous slide, I still witness my friends and family who text and drive. I wonder if they would think twice about distracted driving if they knew it was six times more likely to cause an accident than driving while intoxicated, which is the same as driving after four beers and is the number one driving distraction reported by teens. If you take the risk, you are 23 times more likely to crash. To simulate as if you were actually texting while driving, I ask you to please close your eyes for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. You may open. That was the amount of time you just took your eyes off the road. And if you are traveling at a speed of 55 miles per hour, that's the same length as a football field. This takes place by thousands of drivers at any given time across the country, and it slows their brake reaction speed by 18% which then leads to a 400% increase with your eyes off the road. A woman submitted a story to a website I found, and after reading it, I felt it needed to be shared with you today. The woman worked in a junkyard crushing cars, and one day she saw a van that changed her life forever, so she wrote. I saw a van that looked like it got a T-bone hit on the driver's side and passenger's door. This impact was easily 60 miles per hour. When I looked in the passenger rear sliding door window, I found an infant car seat. Straps were cut to remove the child, and they were very frantic, like someone trying very hard to get the child out. The baby seat was half its original width in the middle, and was obviously twisted out of shape from the impact. When I, when I looked closer, the brown car seat was covered in blood, which dries reddish brown, and there was a high-speed splatter above where the seat was originally sitting. Then, as I looked away, I saw a teething ring beside the seat. This child was less than a year old. I sat down and just cried at that point, and when I finally regained my composure, I found my boss and told him what I saw, and I asked him what happened. He said the parent was texting while driving and ran through a red light at an intersection. He was first hit by a car on the driver's door, and then second by a truck on the passenger's. They did not die on impact, but both did die a few hours later. Upon reading the woman's story, I realized that distracted driving doesn't just kill adults and teens. It's innocent infants and children as well. The woman's story inspired me to help make an impact within my community. I wanted to alert the student body about the dangers of texting while driving. But before I did anything too extreme, I wanted to conduct a survey. This survey consisted of nine questions asking student drivers their habits of texting while driving. When we got back the results, it was definitely not what I expected. Seven of our students said they had lost control of the car, veered into another lane, or gone off the road while texting and driving, and I was scared for them. Now I was ready to do something extreme. I was ready to plan a mock car crash. My car crash took place on May 24th at 9.30 in the morning. We had five actors, including myself, as the innocent bystander. We theoretically killed Ryan, who was wearing the Las Vegas t-shirt, and Justin, who had a huge gash on his forehead. At 9.30 on the dock, we had sounds come over the intercom, playing out our scenario, 
of Jeff texting while driving and Ryan not wearing her seatbelt. When the sounds were over, the students were told to go outside where we had our mob crash stage. Ryan was through the car windshield and dead on impact, and Justin was pronounced dead 15 minutes later. When I looked out into the crowd, I saw tears forming in most of the students' eyes, and then I started to cry. No matter how much I presented the facts and think I know it all, this crash made me realize just how real it all can be, and how crashes like this can happen even to the safest of us. When the mock crash was over, everyone was escorted inside to the gym, where we had a funeral set up. Myself and Mr. Crooch were the speakers, and we invited friends and family to come up and say their goodbyes. When all was said and done, there was not a dry eye in the audience. My mission had been accomplished. To help increase awareness in your community and among yourselves, take the first step by signing the pledge. When you sign, you take the danger out of hurting yourself and others. Another way you can help is by downloading AT&T Drive Mode. This app simply sends a text back to the sender saying you are unavailable and cannot text. You can also install the drive cam. What this does is monitors and captures driving behavior and provides real-time driver feedback. You can remind yourself to put down the phone by wearing a special thumb ring. This ring is bright and says a slogan such as text free. But you may be wondering, how does text while driving relate to family consumer sciences? Well, there is a class here at Burton High School called Personal Choices. Part of this class deals with the responsibility behind the wheel. In this class, we learn about the facts. Families acting for community traffic safety. Think smart. Promote attitudes and provide events that keep youth from driving while under the influence of alcohol and other drugs. Buckle up. Promote the benefits and safe use of seat belts, child safety seats, booster seats, and airbags. Arrive alive. Promote safe driving habits, especially for less experienced drivers. Speak up. Promote the empowerment of teens to speak up for their own safety. Bridge the gap. Promote conversation and training for parents of teens as we work together to enhance traffic safety. I also evaluated the Family and Consumer Sciences National Standards and Competencies. I found the area of study 1.0, Career, Community, and Family Connections close to relate to my project and standards 1.2, 1.2.3, and 1.2.4, which are demonstrate transferable and employability skills, apply communication skills, and demonstrate teamwork skills in school, community, and workplace settings also relates to my project. After working through the project and planning my mock crash, I also believe that standard 1.3, evaluate the reciprocal effects of family and individuals participation in community activities and competencies, 1.3.5, and 1.3.6. Analyze and identify the effects and ways families and individuals can influence change in public policies, agencies, and institutions that affect families and individuals closely related to my product, as all members will be able to apply the skills they have learned through Family Consumer Sciences and the FCCLA program. We can, as a whole, dedicate a week to distracted driving by using the FACTS National Program. For example, you could dedicate one day a week to a specific unit of the FACTS program, or you can just focus on one throughout the week. You can make posters, even go to the extremes like I did, and put on a mock crash. I've learned that this can hit home with many individuals, and has impacted at least a few lives. Reardon FCCLA has already started dedicating time to distracted driving by putting on Rush Week. During this time, we make posters, give speeches, and do whatever we can to help our peers realize the risks and dangers they take every day. To present this, 15 people have died in the U.S. Remember, a single word can end your life or another's. Even your brother, sister, mom, dad, a child you don't know. Don't let yourself fall victim to intoxicated driving. Take the pledge, wear the ring, arrive alive. It can wait.